Thankful that you've taken the time to tune in and hear a word from the Lord. We follow the Hebraic calendar like I know many of you do. Some people do not. You certainly don't have to, to be born again of God's spirit. But I have found as an apostle that the Hebrew calendar is God's calendar. And it does show us some focus, target areas, things that the Lord would have us to look at during this month. We are in now the month of Heshvan. What is interesting about Heshvan, it is the month of the flood. So we know that the flood came, uh, Heshvan uh, 17th, and moved through uh, an entire year. Uh, of course, it rained only 40 days and 40 nights, but it actually uh, uh, began to recede a year later. And we have recorded in the Word of God that in the second Heshvan, uh, basically Heshvan 27, uh, Noah left the ark. So he was able to go out onto dry land. And when he did that, the very first thing uh, he built, you know, he built an ark by the instruction of the Lord. And that was a wonderful thing because he and his family were saved from the flood. But when he got off the ark, he also went to build. But this time he built an altar, and it was an altar of sacrifice. And he renewed his covenant with the Lord. And actually, that is the first time we hear in uh, the life of Noah, we hear this word covenant. Covenant is a very powerful, powerful term in the scripture. Uh, God is a covenant keeping God. He's a covenant making God. And what is a covenant? It is a marriage. If you can think of Christ in you and you in Christ, you know that Christ laid down his life for you. And now you are laying your life down for Christ. That is indeed covenant. Every covenant involves sacrifice. And the Lord gave his life, his precious blood for our life. And therefore we receive that and because we believe that the son of God lives within us. But there's a reciprocation to that because if the Lord gave his life for us and we truly believe that and we appreciate and value that, what can we do other than give our life to him. So that is what covenant is about. And I think it's interesting. Many, many people talk about the flood in a very negative way, but actually the flood that God brought on the ungodly world was a good thing because it was a cleansing for the sin of the whole world. Can you imagine living in a world where, where the thoughts of men were unimaginably evil. Thoughts of men carry great power and they carry great influence. Many, many times thoughts of men are very evil. And even if you are around evil people, they may not even say anything, but their thoughts are generating power. And that is exactly what was going on on the earth at that time. And so there was a global flood and that flood cause a, a total disruption, but it was a good thing because it cleansed the, the world. And the following year, there was a new beginning. Noah was the eighth person. I believe he was the eighth person who entered the ark and God shut the door of the ark. Eight meaning new beginning. Also, uh, it's interesting that Heshvan is the eighth month from the spiritual or ecclesiastical year. It is the eighth month. And so from that, we see a new beginning. I, I want to begin to move uh, in the teaching today with a, an encouragement for you. 
we have been through a flood of some kind, have we not, with the flood of COVID, the flood of misinformation, the, the flood of death, uh, the, the flood of being locked down, uh, many people losing their jobs, many, many people, um, unfortunately, losing their loved ones. There has been a very, very dark time in America and, and in most parts of the world in, from 2020 to, uh, on to 2022. Praise God, I believe that this is a, a year for a, a spiritual reset, not a global reset, but a spiritual reset. We are in the Hebrew year 5783. And I believe this is going to be a great year. It's going to be a, a year of recompense. It's going to be a year of putting things right and bringing forth the righteousness of God. So even as Noah and his family uh, started again, they started anew in a very, very pleasant and clean place. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord wants you to know that you can start again. You can move forward uh, into a pleasant place. The Lord wants you to be in a place of grace. As we look at the scripture, Genesis 6, 17 and 18, for behold, God is saying, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die but I will establish my covenant with you, speaking to Noah, and you shall come into the ark, uh, you, your sons, your wife, and your son's wife with you. The Lord had a place of refuge. And the Lord always has a place for refuge for his saints, for his righteous ones. And Noah was considered by God to be righteous. And, and why so? Because he obeyed God, because he he had faith and trust in what the Lord was saying to him, that there was going to be a flood and that he would build the ark. And he obeyed that. Even the name of Noah means rest. And when we move in rest, the reason why is because we have a trust and we have a faith in our Lord Jesus Christ that he is going to see us through, that we are going to come out on the other side and that we always are going to have a new beginning. You know, the Lord Jesus makes all things new. Behold, I make all things new, he says in Revelation. So we are constantly being renewed in the Lord. And his mercies, beloved, are new every morning. We serve such a great God. Now, many people think that the enemy has so much power in the earth today. And you, you could imagine that because of the evil that is on the earth. But the Lord always has an antidote for evil because there is no fight between God and the devil. You see, Jesus on the cross defeated Satan. The scripture literally says in Colossians that he made an open display of him, spoiling principality and the powers of darkness. So the power that Satan once had, the power of death that he had, has been stripped from him. And because Jesus Christ died on the cross, beloved, we are redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death. What Satan banks on is your ignorance. Without knowledge, the people of God perish. And so we want to know and believe what the word of God says. And we want to be able to stand on what the word of the Lord says. This month of Hashvan is a month for you to start again, but it's also a month where you're going to find it maybe a little difficult for you. This month is, um, even today as I'm speaking, is Halloween. I, I know people in America, many people love Halloween, but if you think about it, so much is dark in Halloween. People are drawn to the dark things, to ghosts, to goblins, to uh, jack-o'-lanterns, to uh, witches, and all of this kind of thing. But uh, something much more malignant than that is uh, we have witches in America. We have witches globally that meet together during this dark time. They move in spells and incantations. And you might note that um, this is a time that comes right prior 
to our elections in America. And we're facing the midterm elections that are ahead of us. And beloved, these are very significant times. And we are challenged and we're commissioned to put people in office that are not going to move by wicked statues or by laws that are totally against the heart of the Lord. But we are to move in righteousness and put people in office that will establish righteousness in the land. So we do have enemy. We do have pressure. Jesus said in this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. Many times people focus on the tribulation and they forget about the part of overcoming. You need to understand God knows the end from the beginning. You will overcome the constellation in the skies this month is Scorpio. And we know that the Lord told his disciples that he gave them authority to tread over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing by no means shall harm you. We must keep that ever present in our minds, but we do not overcome the devil through the flesh. We do not overcome the devil through our soul or our intellect. We overcome the devil through the Holy Spirit. So you may find yourself um, in times where you're facing a trial this month and the anointing of God is being pressed out of you. But I want to encourage you, the, the anointing and the revelation that the Holy Ghost is going to give you will give you power over any evil that may be coming against you, wanting to pull you down. This is also a month to remember that the flood came to expose roots and root systems. Uh, and that's what floods do. They bring erosion. Uh, so we, we need to be able to see the roots of sin in our life. If we don't pull up the roots, if we don't uh, repent, if we do not repent, as um, John the Baptist said, and put an ax to the root, we won't be able to bear good fruit. But as we put an ax to the root because we're repenting of the way we're thinking that is contrary to God, because we're seeing roots in our life that have gone back for, for a long time. Sometimes they even go back to prior generations because that's part of the iniquities that come through our bloodline. We need to deal with these roots of sin, these thought patterns, the way we look at life that's twisted, that is not in alignment with the Holy Spirit's wisdom and counsel, not in alignment with the word of God. So look for any bitter root that is in your life and repent. A repentance will bring a refreshing in your life and indeed give you a new start. So there is internal work that the Holy Spirit will be asking you to do. And if you submit to him, and you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, you have the, f the fear of the Lord. You have an awesome respect for the power of God. You will be able to gain great ground in this uh, month of Heshvan. Looking at Isaiah 59, 19, I find this a, a very interesting scripture. When the enemy shall come in, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, many people interpret the scripture as saying that when the enemy, when the devil comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. But what if we read this differently, beloved? And we read it like this. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Which way do you want to perceive this? Well, frankly, because I know what Christ has already done for me on the cross, and because I know that the enemy is a defeated foe, and because I know that I serve Jehovah Nissi, which is uh, the Lord of the banner, or the Lord of victory, and that the battle is the Lord, I want to read this as when the enemy comes in the spirit of the Lord, like a flood, will raise up a standard against him. So, you know, the power of a flood is, is very, very great. And it brings great cleansing. It brings a removal. And when the devil comes in, 
It just shows you that there's an area in your life where he has taken opportunity. It may be a blind spot in your life. It may be something in your soul that you haven't fully dealt with. It may be through a grudge that you're holding. It may be through words that you've heard that has twisted you, that has brought darkness into your life. And so the enemy, because he is an opportunist, will come in. One of the greatest way he comes in and the easiest way that he comes in is through anger. And we all get angry, beloved, but we should always deal with our anger very quickly. We shouldn't hold on to anger. We should release anger or offense that we have uh, against any person. And how do we do that? Oh, we, we pray and we release these things to the Lord. So when the enemy does attack you, know this, it's not going to be through your strength or your power, but it's going to be through his spirit. It will be the spirit of the Lord shall, th- that shall lift up a standard against him. That word standard actually means flag or banner. And that goes back to Jehovah Nisi. It's like the Calvary is on the battlefield now. It's like you're being attacked and you feel all along, but you look up and the Calvary is here. Uh, The Lord is here and the Lord of heaven's armies are here too. So the Lord is with you and the angels of the Lord are with you. And you should take heart because you should see that they're carrying the flag of heaven and they're, they're coming in to rescue and to deliver you from the enemy. We need to understand that as we go into this next year, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. First Chronicles 14 and 10 through 12. And David inquired of God, shall I go up against the Philistines? It's it's as if David was seeking strategy from the Holy Spirit. So when the enemy in this month would come against you in any kind of way or form, particularly if he's coming against you to bring aught against your brother and sister or the Lord or to bring division uh, in your family or for, for you to uh, move in great depression or discouragement or despair, when you get a bad report, instead of coming under that bad report. No, you take power and authority over it. And how do you do that? You go to the Lord and you ask the Lord, what shall I do about this situation? That's exactly what David did. Shall I go against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hands? And the Lord said to him, go up and I will give them into your hand. And he went up to Baal Perazim And David struck them down there. And David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand. How powerful is that? He understood that he was to obey God, that the Lord used him, but he gave the glory for the victory to God. It was God that broke through, uh, through his hand to his enemies. He broke his enemies. But then he says, like a bursting flood. And that's a a very powerful phrase. And it's one that you need to think of. Like the flood of Noah that came in bursting up uh, the heavens, bursting up the foundations of the earth to bring a great cleansing on the earth, to remove evil from the earth. The Lord, like a flood, wants to do the same thing in your life. Therefore, the name of the place was called uh, Baal uh, Perizim, which literally means the Lord of the breakthrough. Can you begin to call on Jesus Christ as the Lord of your breakthrough? You see, all of us want a breakthrough and we all want um, to have power to have a breakthrough. But really, we need to be serving the Lord of the breakthrough (laughs) so that we are able to get breakthroughs in our life. Many times we serve ourselves. We move in a lot of evil desires. They haven't been cleansed out of our soul And we bear awe against God or resentment against God because we really haven't gotten the breakthrough of which we want. Let's begin to examine our hearts this month. 
And let's begin to say, Father, I want to serve you. And Lord, what do I do about this situation? And how should I move? Because I am serving you, the Lord of the breakthrough. Nahum 1, 7 through 8. Now bear in mind, I'm using these scriptures to corroborate what I believe the Lord is saying in Isaiah 59. When the enemy shall come in, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The power of the flood is the power of the Lord to remove evil. So in Nahum 1, 7 through 8, let's look, look at this passage. The Lord is good. Amen. So anything that you hear contrary, anything that your soul would want to grab or a word or because maybe you haven't received an answer to a prayer or some desire that you have in your life. It is a, it, you know, things take time many times and, and we have to wait on the right time and the right season. So don't make a premature judgment, beloved. Don't make a judgment before the time. Wait until the Lord appears and then you will begin to see things that have been hidden. So don't have resentment or disappointment to the Lord for any matter in your life. Why? Because the Lord is absolutely for you. He is absolutely for you. He is not against you. And you must have this mindset. And if you have any other mindset than that, that is a, uh, a stranglehold that the enemy has on you. And that is a strong hole that you must bring down by the power of the spirit. So remember, the Lord is good in the midst of trial, in the midst of an attack, perhaps a strong hold in the day of trouble. So what you do in the day of trouble is you don't turn from the Lord. You actually grab a hold of the Lord as you could just close your eyes and see the Lord and you could see his hands as my hands are now outstretched to you and you begin to put your hands flushed with his hands and then you lock your hands together beloved that's how you come through so much of trouble here upon the earth because yes we will have tribulation but Jesus encourages us by saying take heart be of good cheer because I've overcome the world it will be he and he alone that will overcome this through you. He is a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. So this is very important here. The Lord knows you. But why? Because you are one that takes refuge in him. So when do you need to take refuge in the Lord? Well, we could say all the time. But when we take refuge that is when we're in a time of trouble or in a time of trial or in a time of despair or disappointment because of natural circumstances in our life. Our, our first go to is to go to the Lord and take refuge in him because he is our defense. He is the one who is going to protect us. And why is that? Because we are in covenant with God, just as Noah, when he came out of the ark, he built an altar to say, I am in covenant. And the Lord said, you know, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. And he said, you know, I'll never let a flood like the one you've just gone through happen again. And I'm going to even put a sign in the sky, my rainbow. You see, you have to understand those folks had never had rain before. They didn't understand rain. And it was going to rain afterwards. And we know it was going to rain afterwards, right? Now, in our day, we have no fear of the rain. But can you imagine when it started raining again? I'm sure that Noah and his family and those that came after him, because they were in such a traumatic situation, was very, very fearful. And look at the compassion of the Lord. The Lord promised, as a sign of my covenant, I'm going to put the bow, the rainbow in the sky. You'll be able to look at the sky and you'll be able to remember my covenant. 
that I'm never going to flood the earth again to remove evil. Isn't that to you such, such, such a joy? The compassion of the Lord it says here, he knows those who take refuge in him, but with an overflowing flood, he will make a complete end of the uh, ad- adversaries and will pursue his enemies into darkness. So here we have a corroboration of Isaiah 59. But with an overflowing flood, he, the Lord, will make a complete end of the adversaries and will pursue his enemies into darkness. Your enemies, beloved, are also the Lord's enemies. And why? Because you have made covenant with the Lord. Jesus is in you. You are in Jesus. You are abiding in Christ and his words are abiding in you. And because of that, because you are in covenant, you will multiply and you will be fruitful. The Lord is your protector. He is an ever present help in trouble. Remember again in Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say about thing, these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? How powerful is that? That is something you need to remember this month in Heshvan. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for every listener. I pray for those that have uh, been drawn to the message today. I pray, Lord, for a penetrating light coming forth from heaven. And Lord, I pray, Father God, for a breaking up of every root system that has been dark, that has been set there to hold one back from producing good fruit. Father, for every root system that is bearing bitter fruit and those that would listen, Lord, I declare that this is a month of shaking and this is a month of breaking. And Lord, there shall be a repentance in these matters and and there shall be an revealing of what is hidden so that healing will manifest. I declare it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, give you favor. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.